Hi, I'm Anjali, and I'm going to be presenting our work, a review on strategies for data collection, reflection, and communication in eating disorder apps. Eating disorders are mental disorders involving serious disturbances in eating behaviors and related thoughts and emotions. Notable examples include anorexia, which involves maintaining an abnormally low body weight, and bulimia, characterized by a cycle of binge eating and purging behavior. They present a public health issue due to their mortality rate and commonality, with one in eight women suffering from a diagnosable ED. However, only a small percentage of affected individuals seek treatment. Today, mobile health apps provide promising means to them for managing their condition. As more of these apps emerge, they need to be assessed from a user's perspective to ensure they are providing legitimate, valuable information. This angle is critical because of the sensitive nature of certain data. For example, displaying anything that draws attention to weight or calories may trigger ED symptoms or exacerbate their condition. Our review addresses this need by understanding if ED apps collect, communicate, and support reflection on information effectively and safely. We not only wanted to uncover the app's current strategies to collect personal information and convey insights back, but we also wanted to understand the advantages and disadvantages of their design principles. We compiled apps suggested by popular health websites, apps in prior reviews, and searched major app stores with ED terms informed by previous ED app literature. This compilation process resulted in 34 apps that we subsequently analyzed. Next, to categorize the apps, we referenced Epstein et al.'s Lyft informatics model that captures motivations for tracking, integrating data, and possible causes for lapses in tracking. This framework formalized how we categorize the information found in ED apps based on the functionalities they intended to support. Two coders reviewed the apps by using them for a week as a typical user, an individual with an ED. They assessed the different information types these apps presented to them for collection and how each app reports back information. Through a thematic analysis, we identified three categories, collection only, reflection only, and collection and reflection. Here is a table showing our categorization. The majority of apps involve both collection and reflection functionalities. Apps in the collection only category mainly gathered user data to allow users to view their behaviors as they happen in the moment. However, these apps exclude functionality that enable new information or insights, which could support reflection. Reflection-only apps are designed to support users in introspection about their ED, either through generic information resources or tips. However, they lack personal data collection, causing their methods to be less tailored than apps with data collection. Finally, both collection and reflection apps allow users to monitor ED attributes over longer periods while providing functionality that helps users find novel insights from their data. We found 11 distinct data types collected and reflected, four strategies for collecting data, and five strategies for reflecting data. As shown in this figure, of the 11 categories, meals, emotions, and thought data were the most collected data types. Collecting and displaying meal information is especially foundational as it can help individuals become aware of their eating habits and associated experiences to make improvements. However, one app showed a BMI chart, and it is important not to include such metrics that may cause fixation on weight, as it is a trigger for disordered weight control behavior. Overall, we found apps were most consistent in using text entry to collect information. There were notable inconsistencies regarding how the apps displayed information, with some showing the data as text logs, while others pre presented insights back with more dynamic visualizations. This is a figure that shows some of the app screenshots we found. And because of this lack of uniformity, we referenced InfoViz guidelines to gauge how effective these apps' methods are for reflection. We use Amar et al.'s task taxonomy to organize the visualization capabilities using the goals they allow users to perform. This screenshot shows several examples of the visualization techniques we found. Broadly across the apps, we found these techniques were either non-optimal or potentially contrary to the goal it was meant to support. For example, to view or retrieve aggregated data, bar charts and pie charts are the most effective according to InfoViz guidelines. Yet, in the app, a table was used instead, which is more tedious. We conclude by highlighting design opportunities that can help these apps be better suited for the complexities of eating disorders. Regarding collection, future iterations of these apps can provide alternate collection modalities, such as voice input. They can also consider a user's context to provide timely reminders to eat or log data in a way that can support their goals. Apps can integrate user feedback to determine valuable information. For example, users could bookmark coping strategies or save data cuts that they find insightful, which would help them find valuable information more easily. And finally, apps may also employ non-traditional visualizations to communicate insights in ways that may be less confrontational about what, how much, and when one is eating. Overall, our paper contributes an analysis of the current ED app design space, how commercial app developers approach that domain, what they tend to emphasize, and what regions are underexplored. 
I urge you to check out our full paper to get a comprehensive understanding of the 34 apps we reviewed, the existing frameworks and literature regarding InfoVis, personal informatics, and eating disorder treatment we used to ground our review, and also get a complete breakdown of our findings and design implications.